everybody, Patreon. I just scored a couple computers today. Uh, one of them is this Compaq Desk Pro 286E, and the other one is in my car. It's the 386S, but for today I'm going to open up and we're just gonna explore a little bit this Compaq 286 E. I have been hunting for a 286 and a 386 and today was like Christmas Day. I am so stoked and I just want to open it up and uh, look around in there. So let's do that. Okay, so I don't um, have my camera mount today and I'm kind of propping this phone up against this pencil holder. That's not even our company anymore. <laughs> Old. All right, so I'm propping it up here and just seeing if that, you know, works out for today for today. So I apologize, but let's um let's explore this a little bit. So, obviously there's no discs. I don't have any discs with me, but we have the 2 and a, a half inch drive and a 3 and a quarter inch drive. Should I Ooh, the tape drive? What? I didn't even realize that. Awesome. A taped I honestly just realized that. So we have <laughs> two and a half, three quarter, and a tape drive. Awesome! Holy crap! <laughs> Holy moly! That's really cool. Well, looks like I'm gonna have to go to eBay now. All right, so let's open up the case and see if we can look inside here. I'm at work right now, so let me put the station back on the air, put the show back. All right, so let's take off these screws. You can see there's not anything in the expansion slot. That's okay. Um, that would obviously mean I would figure all oh, these. Screws are tight. And there's a lock. Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, oh, it's unlocked. Okay. Good. So those screws are kind of tight. I'm going to get my screwdriver here. And since this is a Patreon video, I'm not going to be too worried about all the slick edits. You're just going to enjoy it more or less in real time with me right now. But I will use my podcast and broadcast skills to keep a running dialogue stream of consciousness going here. Uh, I need a, a flathead for that. Got my uh, my Leatherman. So let's get the, um, and I can't tell if this is in the shot. Here's a flathead. Every geek needs one of these. Every geek needs one of these in their everyday carry. All right, that did the trick to loosen that one up. Loosen this one up and I, I, ha I obviously have no idea what's inside of here. There could be bats. There could be ghouls and ghosts. We'll see. Are these uh, self-retaining screws? They are. Nice. Uh, for those on Patreon who may not realize, I am based in Houston. Houston is where the Compaq Computer Company was from. David Murray and I, the 8-Bit guy, just visited the old headquarters on one of his recent videos. So let's see what we got. Is it unlocked? I thought the, uh... Huh. Is it unlocked? Where's that lock still? Does this come out further or what? So let's get them out completely. And see if we can get the case off. That says unlocked, so... What the heck? What am I missing? Is that still... Is that in the... Looks like it's in the unlocked position. Alright, I'm gonna cut the video here real quick and figure this out. Alright, I'm silly. I realize what I need to do. You need to push the thing forward and then you can lift it up. So let's get that case. It is surprisingly clean in there. Holy mackerel. Wow. Okay. So I've got the case down there on the floor, the, the top of the case. Look at this. That is not bad on the inside. Is that the coprocessor? Do I have a math coprocessor in here also? Hold on, let me get my... Is that what that is? I can't... 
can't tell. I need to get a better light on it. I can't tell. I don't. I don't think that's the math core processor. Um. Anyway, just having a peek around here. So there's some dust. Obviously, no expansion uh, slots taken up right now. Um, some dust, but overall, it looks okay. There's a couple of ROM chips right there. Cool. The dip switches. So we have all the drives in the front here. We have the dip switch. Sorry, sorry, everybody. It's upside down still. The dip switch layout. That's really cool. Um, where's the hard drive? Hard drive's under there somewhere. I'm gonna uh, take more things apart in here, see what we can dig around under there and find. So yeah, this is uh, definitely the hard drive. I'm gonna take a closer look at that in a second, but I wanted to show you something. Ugh. The motherboard layout. So cool. This is so surprisingly clean. Like I said, there's some dust and, and other whatnot, but really clean. I'm sorry, I really wish I had my mount. Um, but let's explore here. Let's see if we can lift this cage a little bit. And get a better look at this hard drive, maybe. Come on, anticipation. What the heck? Is there more? There's probably more to it than that. It can't be that. Oh, there it is. Alrighty. I wonder if there's any sort of... Golly, look how big hard drives used to be. <laughs> look at the size of this thing. Um, what does that sticker say? Void if removed. Is this count as removed? Look how clean it is! It's just so clean! What's on the other side? Ah, there's something on the other side. Let's see. What is this? Focus you. Let me dust it off a little bit, light a finger. It's upside down, I apologize. Compact perif peripheral CP. 341i. I can probably Google that. 12 volts, 5 volts. Assembled in. I can't read that. Somewhere. <laughs> it's upside down. I apologize. Um, CP341i. I'm going to go to Google and see what that's about. So apparently the hard drive also went under the uh, name of Connor. Oh, there it is right there. Connor. So Connor and Compact use this hard drive. CP341. It's a 40 megabyte IDE hard drive. Obviously it's IDE, but 40 megabytes. Neat. Here's what, you know, 30 seconds of Google turned up. Connor CP341i, 3.3 and a half inch, 40 megabyte IDE drive. And mine looks, so here's 286, 386, all that stuff. And mine looks like it's in really good shape. Really good shape. So it might just fire up. Okay, so I've been poking around a little bit more. Um, let me flip the uh, hard drive out of the way. It looks like, so you can see that uh, top. So let's see, it looks like, right, so the top is the two and a half inch. And it, does it look like it, I see I'm kind of, I, I'm trying to remember old computers, how they worked, but it doesn't look like the two and a half inch drive is operational. It do, definitely doesn't look like the, um, power adapters are plugged into the two and a half inch drive which is on top the uh, three and a half inch floppy which is right here or five and a quarter i'm sorry uh the two floppy drives aren't plugged in obviously either in power and it also looks like they're not plugged into their ide slots see right there and right below it these two ide cables uh the ribbon cable that's not uh, plugged in, nor is the power. The only one that's powered and plugged in to the IDD, IDE cable is the bottom tape drive. So, with how clean this looks, I'm going to see if... I'm at work right now. 
Um, I'm going to see if I can uh, hook it up to a VGA monitor if there's one laying around maybe. Sorry about the camera work guys, I'm so freaking sorry. Let me put this back together, hold on. So what I'm saying, I'm button, I'm going to button this up a little bit, something's printing. I think they're doing tests with the EAS. Anyways, that has nothing to do with this computer. Um, I'm gonna see if I can hook it up to a VGA monitor if there's one laying around work somewhere and just try to boot it up. I do not have a compatible, I do not believe I have a compatible mouse and keyboard here at work. I'll show you what I mean because obviously this 286 does not have any USB interface. So let me go over the back to show you what interfaces it, it does have. So PS2 for the keyboard and mouse and I'm not sure that I have any of that at work. Uh, printer port or aka serial port and another serial port this is primitive usb basically and of course the vga uh, monitor output if i'm not mistaken it's 256 colors out of this 286 computer um but yeah let me see if i can fire it up and at least maybe just see what's see what's what on here at first fire up it's so clean that i have pretty high hopes that it'll fire up so let's test that out Unfortunately, I can't hook up this monitor uh, to this 286 because, if you'll notice, this pin blank and this modern, more modern LCD has all the pins, so it gets blocked. I can't, can't put it in there because this is blocking it but I have a couple CRTs at home. Maybe that'll work. But honestly, right now, I wouldn't mind doing a little smoke test and uh, firing it up. I, I, again, I apologize so much for this camera work. Uh, so it's plugged in and I just wanna hear it fire up. A little smoke test here, ready? Three, two, one. Sounds good. Nothing is grinding. Nothing is rattling. I have every reason to believe that I would be getting video output right now. That's probably two things. Those beeps are probably a couple things. One, no keyboard and mouse is detected because Obviously, nothing is plugged in. Two, it's probably also a CMOS battery issue. There's no way, even if the CMOS battery is looks good, that it's still good in this thing. Um, the speaker looks nice, though. The speaker looks like it's a great job. This is so, so wonderful of a find. So wonderful. Sounds good. This is a massively good find here. Anyways, I'm gonna do a little more hunting, see if I can find a compatible monitor around here. But I highly doubt it. So we'll see. I might uh, restart the video, <coughs> resume the video from home. Ugh, feels so good. Okay, so I found a compatible VGA cable. I'm not sure that the monitor it's hooked up to is compatible. 
But、uh, we will find out. So let's plug that in. The monitor it's connected to is way over here.、Uh, but I also found a PS2 keyboard. So let's see if that、um, helps anything at all. Don't have a PS2 mouse. But that's not so important with these old machines. So let's see how that goes. Now let's plug this into that. I've also hooked up the、uh, power connections and IDE cables to the、uh, three and a half inch floppy and the five and a quarter.、Uh, as you know, the tape was already hooked up. So let's see if I get anything on that monitor. Anything at all. I don't have any disks, only the hard drive. So let's see what happens on that monitor over there. Anything at all. Something's happening. The light flashed. Whoop. Oh. How much RAM do I have? Please be one meg at least. Woo, one megabyte of RAM. Disk drives are doing stuff, going through their boots. F1 key, that's normal. Okay. Let me go over here and press F1. Okay. Does it have DOS? No, it's not found. That's fine. Okay, so we're in DOS. Great. To the DOS directory, and I typed in test. Which is a com file, so I'm guessing this is、uh, DOS version 6.22.、Uh, but let's see what happens when I hit enter. And again, I'm sorry that this is so far away. Options not set. Huh. Is definitely not 1980. I'm gonna go through this. Okay, so I mean, looks like the BIOS.、Uh, let's see what more we can see here.、Uh, I got a. The time is not correct, but that's neither here nor there. I corrected the date. I have no math coprocessor in there. Just get drive A and B, 1.44 megabytes, three and a half inch. That's incorrect. I'm not sure what's the slave or master or whatever is going on there, but I could、uh, adjust those. I'm probably not going to adjust anything right now. Fixed disk、uh, is the Type 43, 40 megabytes, correct? There's not another fixed disk. Basic memory, 640 extended 384 for a total of one megabyte. Video graphics controller. Okay. Looks good. There's no Windows installed on here, so I'm gonna probably install Windows、uh, 3.1 a little later. Okay, so I found、uh, this directory called Bicycle. Let's see what's in the directory. There, well, there I already know what's kind of in it, but there's a program. I think it's dp.exe. Let me find it. Yeah. Oh yeah, there it is.、Uh, it's either DP or OP. It looks like a DP with this monitor.、Uh, so let's type in DP and see what comes up. So there's a game here. What the heck am I seeing on this screen? What? Okay. So one player's <laughs> rocking a Confederate flag. The other player has a gun. The other player is a Federation. It's from the Star Trek Federation. What is that? Oh, a cigar, a steamboat, a diskette, and a martini. But a rebel flag, gun, Federation. What even is this? Someone hit enter. And yeah, that's a, that's that's how slow it deals. So there's that poker game. Oh, apparently it's three point three one, I guess. 
So I found a dump of the auto exec bat, and it looks like what he had set up here is that he would have the system turn on and enable the mouse input and DOS at least. And then interestingly, go back to the C prompt and this easy tape. It looks like every time he booted the system, he would back up the system to tape and that would finish and go right back to the command prompt, uh, C colon, the command prompt. So it looks like he backed up the system every time he started the system um, to restore his system should he have broken anything in his tinkering. Very smart. Very smart whoever had this before me. Okay, it's been a journey since the last time I checked in here. Uh, where to even begin? So, this is the 286, the Compact 286, of course, obviously. I am at the window setup. I'm on disk 3 and it's saying unable to read file. The file is the uh, write program, write.exe, just a word processing program. So I thought this would be a good point to show you how I'm making all of this work. So I get the files I need off the internet. This is off of my Threadripper, not Threadripper, not Threadripper, this is off my Ryzen 9 PC. So I get the files I need and I copy them, the disk images basically, the contents of the disk. For instance, this is Microsoft Windows 3.11. And there's six disks with that. So what I do is I copy those disk contents onto the USB drive. And I take the USB drive and put it in this old Windows 98 machine because it has both a USB port on the back as well as a good three and a half inch floppy drive. So I take the files off the USB stick and put, you know, disk 3 onto a floppy disk in the disk drive and I take that out and basically put that into the 286. So I've already made six disks for Windows 3.1 so disk 3, quote unquote, is in the drive right now and since it can't read that one file, I'm going to remake the disk, recopy the files to disk 3 and reinsert it into the floppy drive and hit retry. Sometimes this happens with old floppy disks. It's kind of a nightmare setting this stuff up um, but you go through it one step at a time, trial and error. The friggin trial and error to get this IDE to compact flash adapter working so I don't have to rely on old hard drives which are prone to failure and loud and annoying getting that up and running was a nightmare uh, I'll just say if anyone has a 286 a compact 286 out there that the what is it the fixed disk type there's a bunch of different types it's a it's a letter it's a sorry it's a number code type 1 disk type 2 disk type 50 disk I was able to make it work with type 33 so if that helps anybody out there, Type 33 has worked for me on this Compact 286E. Now that means that it's only a, a 112 megabyte partition, but it's working, so that's what I'm going with. Remember, this is a 286. So a 112 megabyte partition is almost, is about three times as much as I used to have. The disk that came in the hard drive, not this one, this disk is 40 megabytes. So I've gone from 40 megabytes originally to 112 megabytes-ish. So uh, almost three times as much capacity, give or take. But that's where I'm at right now. So I'm going to make a new disk number three for Windows 3.1 in this old laptop here. And we will continue with the Windows installation setup. I should mention right now, my goal with this machine is just to get Windows 3.1 installed on the hard disk and have Microsoft Office 4.3. After that, yes, I will install games. So uh, the 8-bit guy, David Murray's Planet X3, Lemmings, SimCity, any other games that might be compatible with a 286. But really, I just want this as a good example of a 286 running Windows 3.1 and Microsoft Office 4.3. We'll see how far I get. I'll check in in a moment. So here we go. 
I've got disk three copying to the A drive from the USB stick. So when disk three, disk three is done writing, I'm gonna pop that out and put it in here and hit retry. So that's where we're at. All right, so the disk is complete. Let's see if freshly formatting this disk and rewriting to it with freshly charged magnetic particles helps read any better. So retry is selected. Just make double sure, retry. We'll see. Please. Come on. Go to 34. I don't like that sound. Golly, why? I'm gonna try another disc. Alrighty, just did a quick format. Zero bytes in bad sectors. The other one didn't have any bad sectors either. But maybe just using a new disc will help matters. So let's copy the files back to this fresh new disk. I think I already have them copied, so I should just be able to paste. All right, check back in a minute. All right, 15 seconds to go, 10 seconds. My wife has brought me cheese sticks. <coughs> Thank you, wife. You're welcome. I love you. I love you. All right, let's see. And uh, there's my son. Okay. All right, let's see if this works. I don't necessarily have high hopes just by the very nature of these being old machines in an old disc. But I might just skip that file entirely because I don't need the right program because I'm going to install Office. But I'd rather just have everything, you know, just for authenticity's sake. But then again, authenticity compact flash drive isn't authentic. Let's go. Come on, 34%. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Stop with the, oh my goodness, yes. Ugh. So, that's, there's a lesson. Anybody trying to, what? Number four, what? you only needed that one? Okay, so I'm gonna pop this out. This is my new Windows 3.1 disc three. You can go to Hades. This is my disc number four. We'll see if this one could read. Okay, let's hit continue. I'm on 35. 35 and we'll... <laughs> oh gosh. Alright, so you know what? This disc I know works. So I'm going to go ahead and reuse it and just... Yeah. So I'm going to reformat that. And copy disc 4 to it, so... Check back. Oop. Check back in a moment. All right. This is a known good disc. Now it's Windows 3.1 Disc 4. And good luck with Disc 3. Come on, 35 or better. So it looks like I'm going to be using that disc for the duration of this installation. Just happy to have a working disc, my goodness. All right, so now we're at disc five. I'm gonna go ahead, this is the old disc five that I made. I'm gonna go ahead before I reuse this disc, I'm gonna set this disc off to the potential reuse, but I'm gonna put my old disc five in there and see if, see if it's good. Come on, 65. 
there we go all right so that doesn't mean the entire disc is good but it's a good start check back in nope <laughs> literally speaking too soon all right gonna take this opportunity opportunity I just copied disk 5 over to the known working floppy drive uh, floppy disk I'll just say that if you're thinking about getting into vintage computing and you're looking at a 286 386 40 86 etc it is critical to have a bridge device and by bridge device I mean this it's extremely difficult if not impossible in most cases to do what you need to do setting up an old PC with a modern PC. So this is a Ryzen 9, this is a 286 from the 1980s. You need a bridge device. So I can download all the files I need to set up this device, the old computer, but I need a bridge device to actually write the floppy disks to put into the old computer. So I use this computer, the modern computer, to write to a USB stick. I take that USB stick put it into the bridge device so I can take the files off that USB stick and put them onto floppy disks and I take those out and put them into the old device. I cannot recommend enough getting a bridge device. You are going to have a bad time if all you do is buy an old computer without a bridge computer. That's all I wanted to say about that. Alright, I just put in disk 5 and we are going to retry see if we get any more progress come on 66 percent I know this disk to be a good floppy disk oh the bar moved out there we go 66 all right we'll check back in in a minute all right so my old disk 6 is in there oh gosh don't copyright strike me mute the music see what we get Has been saying okay, okay, all right. It's doing stuff. All right, so I'm gonna continue the setup. There's no, no printer. So let's see. Ooh, 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 ooh. Do, 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 do. You can see it reading off the compact flash drive as well as lighting up there. Where's my mouse? My mouse is hidden back there somewhere. Set up Gnander. Skip tutorial. Alright, moving floppy disks. I'm gonna do that. See what we uh, got here. Return to MS DOS. All right, let's try that. Um, removing floppy disk from your drives. Into config sys, and then restart. I see. Okay. Well. <laughs> well. Okay. I, so I need my DOS boot disk, which is right here. I need to copy those files to the C drive, actually. Here's that, I don't know, is this Italian or Portuguese? You'll see what I mean in a second. Here's that space bar that's split into a backspace. I'm sure I could Google this. Block my use. I, think, I don't know what it is. Is it Spanish? It's filthy. I'm not going to use this. I'm not going to use this as my daily driver, obviously. I'm waiting on my actual English comp uh, PS2. So let's see. Let's see here. What is on my C drive now? Looks like all the Windows files. So let's do a DIR. Oop. Sorry. DIR. So slash is actually this. Should just type in Win or Windows. I just want to look through here. Just curious. All 
Let's type in win and see what happens. Oh, yes! <laughs> oh, yes! Uh, so I need to copy um, those DOS files to see. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, yes. Mm 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 mm. Okay. Yes. All right. Be back in a minute. I said it's nice and snappy, but that's not entirely the case. I mean, that's fine. But I don't want it to be entirely snappy. I want it to be authentic. Otherwise, I'd just be using DOSBox. That's a 12 megahertz processor in here, so I want to see it chugging and loading the screen. So I'm going to go here and click exit and just. Do you want to save? No. I like how it populates like that. I like how you can see the processor working and it's not just instantaneous. Only real hardware can do that, and that's way faster than it would be with a traditional spinning disk, thanks to the compact flash. But you can still see the 12 megahertz processor working, and that's exactly what I wanted. So I've shut down the computer, and I re rebooted it. Here's why I'm waiting for my um, real-time clock and CMOS battery. The, the What is it? Gosh, the Dallas DS. Come on. Come on, baby. Oh, I, maybe I can't do it because it's... I don't know if you can see it down in there. Gosh. Yeah, I think you can barely see it. That black thing right in the middle. Uh, I can't. I'll have to highlight it or something. Um, really got to put a new one in there. Waiting for that still. Rebooted it. Didn't save anything in the BIOS, quote unquote, so it's not seeing that, which means I have to go into the setup with this disc and tell it to look for that drive again. So, oh my gosh. All right, so here we are. Uh, have you played a setup since connecting the battery? Sure. Oh no. <sighs> Correct date. That's fine. Sure, it's 1980. That's true. It's fine. Yeah. Yes, it is. It's just that the BIOS, the CMOS didn't save it because the CMOS battery is no good. So let's change that. Press F4. Go down a fixed disk drive. And I seem to remember it was 33, but I can bring up the thing here. Yeah, 30, type 33 is what worked best for me. So I'm going to type in 33. Enter. And I'm going to do the same. Actually, I'm not going to do that. There's no fixed disk, too. Just hit enter. All right. So let's see if getting out of Mia will do anything. Allow me to at least see my C drive. Now it's going to ask me to put the boot disk back in there, if I remember correctly. Check the memory. I got it. So if I hit F1 right here, it's not going to do anything. Yep. So I'll put in my boot disk. This was the uh, Compact Diagnostics disk. The boot disk. Alright, let's see if I can go to my C colon now. Ugh. Alright, so it didn't work. I'm back in setup. Fixed disk drives. I'm going to go ahead and set them both for 33. See if that makes any freaking difference in the world. Let's get out of here. Exit and save. I'll be back. Okay, it's a day or two later. I finally have my English compact keyboard. You can see that. It's all in English. It's also filthy. I need to completely clean that. Um, but more importantly, I finally have my CMOS battery slash real-time clock replacements. One for the 286 that I've been working on and one for the 386 that is in the queue. So, 
Let's see here. Give me a second because I need to use two hands for this. Basically, I pulled this whole assembly up. I'll show you in a second. Yeah, so I pulled this whole assembly up. And it is right back there. Uh, it's bad light. But I will... Gosh, it's going to be hard to do. All right, I'm going to try to do this. That's the old one. Let's see if I can hold up the cage with my camera hand. I'm going to take... Here's the new one. Focus. And I'm going to put it where this one was. In the correct orientation, of course. So pulling this out of the socket needs to go in like that. Okay. So there's the old Dallas one. Let's put the dot in the bottom left hand corner. <clears throat> so the dot's the bottom left hand corner. This one, that white dot. Uh, this one has the dot, but it's not white. It's just an indentation. So bottom, what did I say? Left hand corner? What did I say? Bottom right? Oh, geez. Yeah, bottom right. And put that back in to the socket. Might actually help to look at the phone a little bit here. Sorry. I can't tell if, that's, if that was correct. Gosh, it's getting tiring. Let's see. Is that lining up? Looks all right. It looks like it's seated in there. All right. Let's lower that button down. That's fine for there. I'm gonna hook this back up to the IDE cable. <clears throat> Be back in a moment. All right, time for the smoke test, so to speak. No smoke yet. Nothing on the screen yet either. You don't have it plugged in correctly. Let's see. So here is, I've got two of these Symphony chips. Sorry. This is the one I had put in there and this is the second one. If you'll notice, that's what it should look like. But you'll notice on the one I just inserted, we got some bent pins going on here. So that's why it didn't boot. I am going to bend these pins back and reinsert it. See if that helps. It's always something, always something. Really shouldn't be attempting this one-handed, but I just want to show you what I'm doing. I couldn't quite get it with my fingernails, so I'm gonna to try to bend that one straight in the pliers. I don't think that's gonna to work too well. Or did it? That looks much better. Looks much better. Let's see if I can't get it a little better. A little better, a little better. That's all right. And this one back here. Get that a little straightened up too. See if that sits sits correctly. And I'm gonna do it with both hands. I can't do it one-handed. All right, that felt better going in. So let's see. Set that back down there. Let me, sorry. Plug in the hard drive again. Gosh, it's so cumbersome with one hand. Oh, just stay put. Can I get this on camera? Probably not. Probably not. Not on camera, but I'll show you what I did. 
All right, ID cables back in. Smoke test 2.0. We got the screen, good sign. Let's go memory check. Board failure, that's fine. Probably just means I installed the, uh... well, actually it's not fine. It's not moving from there. <sighs> I think I just had it upside down like an idiot. Focus, get my arm out of the way. Let's see if that fixed it. Oh, just my own stupid. Hold on. See if that fixed it. Did I just have it upside down like an idiot? Actually, I got it. Again. Well, the flash drive, you know what I mean. Okay. Plug that back in. See if third time's a charm. Is this the third time? I've lost count. Smoke test. Screen's coming on. Please do the ram check. Ram check, ram check, ram check. Yes! <sighs> okay. So I'm going to have to go through system setup. I've unplugged. Yep, yep, yep. That all looks good because I just replaced the battery. Um, you put in my DOS boot disk. Hit F1 on my new keyboard, test that out also. It's working. Sorry about the glare from the lights, this is all gorilla style. Yeah, I know, I took out those CD system files because I don't have a CD-ROM. And it would hang at this section looking for the CD-ROM banana drive or whatever it is. So taking out the CD 1 through 4 files allows it to boot to the prompt, which is what I want. So now I can eject DOS boot disk, put in the compact diagnostics disk, and go through initial setup and see if I can get this thing working. Utility. I know. Okay, so it is not 1980. Let's do the correct time with the correct keyboard. It is the 10th today as of recording 2020, unfortunately. Birthday's in a few days. And what time is it right now? 22.32. And I always do like 30 seconds if I don't know. Five and a quarter inch drive is 1.2 megabytes on whatever. Why did it automatically do that? I've never seen that before. So I'm gonna go down to drive type. Let's see if it works. This might not work. Um, what I what it work? I know 33 usually works for me, but it's bigger than that. So I'm gonna do type 51. I believe it was. Let's try type 51. Actually, let's try let's try even bigger than that. 325. 15. Let's try. Ooh, 49, 651, no, that's a compact, okay. Um, 315, type 38, let's see if that works. Zero, I don't, I don't have a second drive. Okay. 
Let's see if that works. Let's see if it boots to Windows now. Exit and save. Take the drive, or er, sorry, diagnostics disk out. Let's see if it looks to the hard drive. My guess is it won't. Can't be that easy. If it goes to a prompt, that'd be amazing, but I doubt it. I bet it's just gonna hang here. Yeah. Just gonna hang there. I'll be back. Actually, real quick, at this point, I think, remember I put in type, what did I do? Type 38 or something for a 300 meg or whatever hard drive. I think at this point, I could reformat everything. Actually, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see something. Let's F disk. I was gonna say I could reformat and reinstall Windows. I really don't feel like doing that. So let's just see what's going on with my partitions. Four. Yeah, see. 251 megabytes in the primary partition. It's just, it's got some wonkiness here. Got some wonkiness. Let's see. Oh yeah, you see, there's a 300 megabytes that I uh, set in the setup for a fixed disk, 300 megabytes, but... Gosh, now I'm torn. Should I reformat? I don't think so. I need, I'm going to put in type 33 and see what happens.